Yes, welcome into Sports Bet. Betty and Insight today, Paulie and Teddy, weekend preview edition. AFC South continues in the deep dive with the Indianapolis Colts. I don't think we're going to like this team. We'll get to them coming up, play of the day, and also big game breakdown. The Astros and the Blue Jays, Sanchez is back, and the Angels and the Rangers. Nolasco, two good starts in a row. See if he can make a three in a row. What a job by Sosha coming up. Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. But first, NBA news, Teddy. How about Nick Young to the Warriors? Seems like an odd fit. Yeah, I, I mean, he does. But when you look at the graphic uh, from uh, ESPN, it shows it real clearly what Nick Young is capable of doing on catch and shoots. And Steph Curry, number one in the NBA. <laughs> Kevin Durant, number three. Uh, or, sorry, Kevin Durant, number six. Klay Thompson, number nine. Nick Young ranked second in catch and shoot. So we know that he's a wild card. We know that Nick Young loves to jack up the three. But playing in this system with this team, he might be a pretty good fit. And the Warriors may have just gotten a little bit better. That might work out. Although I can't say the same for Rudy Gay and with the Spurs. That seems like an odd fit too, that he's a black hole. And every, te- every time he leaves, the team gets better after he leaves. So that it seems like a weird fit for San Antonio. Maybe it is. On the other hand, when the Spurs make a move, it's almost like the Patriots when they make a move. You know, when New England makes a move and you kind of scratch your head, they really cut that guy? Why, why do they, you know, what's up with that? Well, in Belichick, we trust. Uh, when it comes to the Spurs, all right, Rudy Gay wasn't a great first option or second option or third option on championship contending teams. Every team he played on ever pretty much stunk. But as a role player for San Antonio, the guy's still got some game. Uh, I don't know if he's going to take over games, but in pop, we trust. I think it's a better move, perhaps, than you do, Polly. All right, and the Knicks continue to be the Knicks, even with Jackson out. Bobby Marks at Bobby Marks 42 on Twitter covers the NBA. Tim Hardaway Jr. was traded for Jerry and Grant, who was traded for Derrick Rose, who was renounced, so the Knicks could sign Hardaway for 71 million. How about that? As they bring Hardaway Jr. in, if Mello is bought out and goes to another team, once he leaves, the three highest-paid Knicks will be Hardaway Jr., Courtney Lee, and Joakim Noah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's going to be another long season for New York. But uh, I mean, Hardaway had a real good year, had a breakout year with uh, Atlanta last year. But when you talk about teams with salary cap money to spend. $71 million on Tim Hardaway Jr.? Well, that's the thing. Ke- Kevin Arnold, I mean, as bad as that tweet is, Kevin Arnowitz tweeted the Hawks were thinking it'll probably take $45 million to bring to get Hardaway back. And the Knicks give him $71? <laughs> the, the Knicks continue to do what the Knicks have done. And Again, I used to be a Knicks fan. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it sucks being a fan when your team is hopeless and continues to be hopeless, and that's what the Knicks are. And one more. Patrick Beverly, who played with this guy... And a Woach, I mean, you know it means something. It's one thing for Beverly to say it because they're teammates now. But for Woach to say it yesterday on ESPN that the Clippers signed this point guard who played in Russia, uh, he agreed to a, he was playing in Russia. They gave him a two-year, $12 million deal. Woj and Beverly said he's the best passer in the NBA right now. Without playing a game, was it named Milos Teodosic, I believe. Teodosic or Teodosic. Uh It's got to be an O uh, because that would be the Eastern European pronunciation Milos Teodosic uh the guy can pass you know Ricky Rubio could pass but he could never shoot at the NBA level and he never took uh the T-Wolves to the playoffs this guy was 38 percent from three for what it's worth i uh, reading up a little bit about him but sure there's uh, we, we talk about the loss of Chris Paul and the Clips are hopeless and everything's going bad and the Lakers are lined higher than the Clippers next year and uh, I'm with you conceptually Paul you talked about it on yesterday's show and the more I thought about it the more it made sense this is an overreaction. The Clips are not that bad, and they're not in rebuilding mode. And if they got a point guard that people don't know about, maybe they will offer a little bit of value early on in the campaign. All right, some bad bets. The Phillies, they lost to the Pirates. Why are they taking money? Taking money? And also, play the day loser, shame on me. Teddy told me to get off it. I didn't listen to him, but I wasn't the only one. A 50-cent move on a Red Sox sale on the Sox went up to $2. They scored one run. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's start with the Phillies. Uh, and that 6-3 loss to the Pirates. I mean, to see a team with a 333 winning percentage, and it's lower than that because Philadelphia played close to 500 baseball for the first couple of weeks of the season. So they played like 300 ball for the better part of the last two months. They can't be getting steam. You know, Joaquin Benah with the bullpen meltdown for Philadelphia. And the Pirates, 
with a three-game winning streak, only seven games back of the Brew Crew in the NL Central. As for the Red Sox, I mean, one of the things we talked about yesterday on Sportsbit, Jacob Faria, he threw another gem last night. Uh, the, the advanced metrics don't love him. The markets don't love him. As you mentioned, nothing but Boston money. Huge 50-cent move uh, towards the Red Sox. But Faria, another gem last night. And, of course, uh, the bullpen behind him only allowed a single base runner in three innings of work. Rays making their move right now, although betters did get some of the money back with under money on the total. That 7.5 got bet down to 7, and the game landed 5. Yeah, a sale cannot get a lot of uh, get a break with the run support a lot as well. Bad for the books, a couple of them. While the betters said, we're coming right back with the Tigers. After a 45-cent steam move the other day when they lost, they came right back with them. And a 35-cent move as they beat the Giants. Cueto was scratched late with an ear infection. And look at this, after a two-hour rain delay in Washington, when it wasn't raining, the Braves hung in there and they took money as well and beat the Nats. Yeah, I mean, let's start with the Tigers. I mean, we talked about how Detroit shouldn't be getting steam yesterday. And... They, uh, uh, and they took steam uh, again yesterday and got the money. Uh, but the Giants, I mean, they've made a lot of mediocre pitchers look good this season. Uh, Annabelle Sanchez, eight strikeouts without a walk. Uh, that's his best start uh, of the campaign. And uh, as for Atlanta, uh, I mean, the, the, the markets have been waiting for a correction for Geo all season. <laughs> and uh, the money uh, came in uh, on the brace. Freddie Freeman, a pair of RBI doubles. He now has five hits and his first three games back off the DL. All right, and look at this. Here we go. We're on vacation next week because of the All-Star break, so we got to sneak this in there. Make no mistake about it. The best show in television history, Game of Thrones, is back. Next Sunday, Season 7. Look at these odds from Bavada. Let's buy. throw up that picture, too, of uh, Cersei Lannister, the baddest bitch on television. She's a dollar thirty to uh, sit on the Iron Throne at the end of Season 7. Jon Snow and Tyrion are 10-1. to 1. Sansa Starks 12 to 1, Jamie Lannister 18 to 1 as well. Can't wait. 9 days away, Teddy covers. What's your what, what so what, what's your bet there? We want the chalk with Lannister or one of those dogs look live? I w- I, I think that I would I go with the chalk there. I go with I go with the chalk there. Absolutely. I'd lay I'd lay it with uh, with Cersei to uh, be on the Iron Throne at the end of season 7. Game of Thrones episodes that I've watched? Zero. I watch sports, man. I watch sports, and then when I'm at the end of the night, when I'm ready to pass out, I want to watch like the, the half hour of Family Guy or South Park or something. I don't watch the drama. You gotta, you gotta get in. You gotta get in. It's unbelievable television. I can't. I, where do you find the time, my friend? I, you know. Where do you find the time? Hey, with the in demand, with on demand, you can knock out a season in a day, no problem. I don't have a day. That's the whole point, man. You know, it's the middle of summer. You're supposed to have time in the middle of summer. I'll tell you what. I haven't had any time this summer yet, and it's not coming, uh, even with the, the All-Star break next week. we got to talk home run derby, too, because we're not going to be around next week. Let's flash uh, this graphic up real quick. We've got the brackets for the home run derby, and the guy, the only guy I would want my money on is Giancarlo. Uh, you know, Stanton's a monster, and, of course, uh, playing at home, uh, not going to hurt his chances. Any, uh, any of the lower seeds that uh, you might be interested in there? Or are you really looking at Aaron Judge or uh, Moustakas or Seno or somebody like that? I'll tell you what would be a good – they usually put this up. A good prop is is who's going to hit the longest home run. That's a tough call between those two. What about Bellinger? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't think he's – I don't think he could win it. He could win. I don't think he's on their level in terms of distance, though. These guys are monsters. Sure, Judge has hit more than his fair share of big home runs this season. All right, up next, big game breakdown. The Astros and the Blue Jays and the Angels and the Rangers. And we'll get to the deep dive with the Indy Colts on Sportsbet. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. Hey, hey, we're back on SportsBit. Betting Insight today. Time for Big Game Breakdown. Powered by and sponsored by Bet Online. More than just an online betting platform, they boast a focus on the player approach. They built their reputation on offering clients nothing but the best from cutting edge technology, enticing promotions, and the latest sports betting odds. Let's rock and roll. Bet Online. Astros Blue Jays, Houston on the road, dollar thirty-nine and a half the total over minus one twenty. Morton is back against Sanchez. He's back too. Most road wins in the first forty games of a season: the nineteen oh six Cubs, the two thousand one Mariners, and the two thousand seventeen Astros, all with thirty-one. And the offense is mashed all season long away from home. What an impressive road stri- road record that they have. And you see this graphic: two seventy-nine average at home, two ninety-five on the road. That's best in baseball. 
along with the on-base percentage and the slugging, and the rarest of combos. Number one in home runs and 30th in strikeouts. That's almost impossible, Teddy, to be number one in strikeouts, and you have the uh, number one in home runs and the fewest strikeouts. It, it's not almost impossible. It's freaking impossible. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can't have that combination of the most home runs and the fewest strikeouts. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't pass the doesn't make sense test, and yet Houston has done it not just for a week or for a month, for a half of a freaking season. Now, we saw the Astros finally come back to earth a little bit uh, last night, losing uh, against the Blue Jays. Now, instead of 31-9, and the first uh, uh, 40 road games, now they're 31-10 and through their first 41. And they couldn't get going against Francisco Liriano. So, uh, the advanced metric numbers offensively are down just a notch, but... There's no question over the course of the campaign, this team has been an absolute monster. But we've got to ask themselves about the pitching right now. Charlie Morton is a guy that I want to keep my eye on because he's been the ultimate tired retread. A guy that's bounced around the majors and hasn't been all that effective for many years. This year, 5-3, and 4.06 ERA. That's not going to cause a whole lot of fireworks, but the advanced metric numbers are phenomenal on Charlie Morton. His ground ball rate above 50%. His strikeout per nine rate, above 10. When you have your strikeouts over 10 and your ground balls over 50%, there's upside. And a guy who has spent most of his career relying on ground balls, Morton, he's not afraid to challenge hitters this season. Look at the average velocity of his fastball going up, 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 up in each of the last four seasons. He's really chucking it this year. He's challenging hitters and not simply relying on keeping the ball down. You know, with the Blue Jays trying to get out of last place before the break, the offense hasn't been there. How about this graphic? Look at this. They're 29th in average, 28th in on base, and 29th in slugging. Crazy. And look at the numbers in 2016. Batista, Martin, and Tulo are a combined 103 years old. Donaldson's on a 1-for-26 slide with 10 strikeouts. Puts a lot of pressure on the pitching staff. And they can see if Aaron Sanchez is finally ready. On the DL three different times... He started April 8th, April 14th, went on the DL. April 30th, he pitched one inning, DL. May 14th, May 19th, and then back on the DL. Threw 75 pitches in a rehab start Sunday in Buffalo. He said, quote, it's not how I thought this year was going to play out. Yeah, no kidding. But that's what I'm stuck at, and I can't be, and I can't be frustrated. I can't be mad. I can't be anything. All I can do is, pull my, is uh, put all my energy towards the second half and however many starts that I've got. End quote there. I mean, it's going to be tough, Ted. He's a hell of a talent, but who knows what you, what he's going to give you today. I mean, certainly uh, you like the upside with Morton and the fact that the Blue Jays can't hit it all. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, we need to talk about Sanchez for just a minute because Aaron Sanchez, as you mentioned, he's a pitcher with a lot of upside. What's wrong with him? We're not talking about his arm hurting or his elbow. He went on the deal in April. He had a blister on the middle finger of his pitching hand. He came back. He lasted one inning before he split a fingernail. Uh, on that same figure, went back in the DL, came back, and, and then really let the hands heal over a six-week span. So the blisters aren't there. The split fingernail's not there. Where, and he is coming off, as you mentioned, a 75-pitch effort in Buffalo on Sunday. You know, Blue Jays haven't played good baseball, but there's a little, a little bit of an uptick right now. I'm in no rush to lay the road chalk with the Astros tonight. All right, number two, Angels and the Rangers. Nelasco against Hamels. Bet online number. Rangers $1.55, 10 the total. Astros have the division locked up. But these other these teams here have a lot to play for. How about this? Games behind in the wild card. Angels two and a half. Rangers three and a half. And it doesn't really matter if Hamels can't get going, but maybe there was a buy signal on the last start. <clears throat> excuse me, on the last start. First six starts, ERA of 438. Strikeouts per nine, 3.9, and the walks per nine, 3.9. Those last two are career worst. But the last time out, six and two-thirds, two hits, no walks, and six strikeouts. He said, quote, my whole game plan is to throw strikes. It didn't happen to be the first couple guys the way I'd like, first couple games the way I'd like. It's just more bear down and throw strikes, be aggressive uh, in the strike zone. This has been a hell of a job by Sosha, Teddy. Look at, I mean, Trout's been hurt. You didn't get nothing out of Richards, and you got Shoemaker banged up. He's been out. It's been a mass unit, and they're still in this thing. Yeah, I mean, look at the starting rotation. They have Nolasco. Chavez, Meyer, Ramirez, and Bridwell. Okay, none of those guys are going to attract a ton of wise guy action. None of those guys are going to make it easier 
for any manager. Heck, it makes a manager want to wear shades whether the sun is shining or not. But, you know, when you talk about the fact that the ace, Garrett Richards, has one start all season. The closer, Houston Street, has four appearances all season. Uh, their best player, Mike Trout, has missed 47 games and counting. You know, the number two and three option of the rotation also hurt Schumacher and Skaggs. Yeah, Sosha's done a hell of a job. Uh, and Ricky Nolasco, I, I mean, look, you know, he, he, he is what he is at this stage of his career. Last year, 8-14 and 14 with a 4.42. This year, he's 4-9 and nine with a 4.42. But his last two starts, not once, now twice, look at the numbers. He's been dominant, 15.1 innings. No runs allowed, only eight hits allowed, a 12 to 2 a strikeout to walk ratio. And it's not weak lineups. He beat the Dodgers. Remember how hot that Dodgers team was? He shut them down. And then a complete game shutout of Seattle in his last outing. His quote Anytime you see the ninth inning, it's huge. But in any complete game, you need luck. There were a lot of good plays behind me. That's one thing that has been underrated about this Angels team. And one of the reasons why they're still in contention despite the loss of so many key players. Their defense has been pretty darn good. We'll get back to their defense when it comes to play of the daytime. All right, up next, the deep dive. We continue with the AFC South and the Colts on SportsBit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Research before you bet. Be sure to check out SBR Picks for the best game predictions, breakdowns, and much, much more. Back on SportsBit, follow us on Twitter at Paulie Howard at Teddy underscore covers. Before we get to the Indianapolis Colts, Teddy... You're going to Costa Rica. Take it away, kid. Yeah, August 4th and 5th. I don't know what you guys are doing, but you should be in Costa Rica. San Jose. Flights are not ridiculous. I paid less to fly to San Jose in June than I did to fly to Boston uh, for the All-Star break uh, this coming week. So tickets are not ridiculous. I'm going to be there. Clay Travis from Fox Sports. Gil Alexander from the VSIN Network. Matthew Holt from CG, from CG Technology. A whole host of other big names in the sports betting world. The inaugural first international football betting conference. Again, that's Friday and Saturday, August 4th and 5th in San Jose, Costa Rica. Where do you find out all the details? Go to www.ifbc.live. Sign up for your free invite today. Or you can go to Sportsbook Review in the forum, sbrforum.com. You can see the link right there. They're going to give away five free tickets today on Friday. Check it out, www.ifbc.live. Let's hang out together in Costa Rica next month. All right, here we go. The Colts win total 8.5. Last year, 8-8 straight up, 7-8-1 ATS, 9-7 in the over, 17 takeaways, 22 giveaways, minus 5 turnover margin. The offense, 5.6 yards per play average, 4 yards per rush, below average, 7.7 yards per pass attempt, and 44 sacks allowed. Bottom 5 at protecting the quarterback, no surprise there. The defense, six yards per play, tied for dead last with the Raiders and Saints. 97.5 opposing QB rating allowed, bottom five, 33 sacks, and 4.7 yards per rush allowed. That was 30th. The, the best move they made was they got rid of Grigson, who was a horrible GM, and once gave up a first-round pick for Trent Richardson. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, let me go back to the stats for a minute. When you look at the defense... Dead last in the NFL yards per play. Bottom five in opposing QB rating allowed. Bottom three in yards per rush allowed. So they couldn't stop the pass, couldn't stop the rush, couldn't stop anybody from doing anything. They finished 8-8. and Luck was hurt. The defense stunk. The offense stunk. Luck took another 44 sacks. Again, a bottom five team at protecting the quarterback. And still, even with all of that stinkiness, even with all of those bad stats, even with an offense that, you know, 5.6 yards per play right out of the average. Uh, you know, they were good with the yards per pass attempt. You're going to be, you're going to have that option with Andrew Luck. But with a statistically crappy season, they're a 500 team against the spread. They're a 500 team straight up. And they should be better this year because, as you mentioned, the number one move they made was firing Ryan Grigson and replacing him with Chris Ballard because it really, it really is hard to think of an NFL GM who did less with more than Grigson. Andrew Luck fell into his lap with his first pick and his first draft and spent the next five years basically not putting any pieces for Andrew Luck to succeed with around him. O-line's been a problem, continues to be a problem. Luck's been sacked 156 times in five seasons. 
and he's coming off off-season shoulder surgery. He's lost a lot of weight. He still isn't throwing. That's definitely cause for concern there. They drafted Hooker on defense to try to help there as well. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. There's just not a lot, lot to like with this team as far as I'm concerned. Well, I, I mean, uh, the offensive line does need work. That being said, Lux is tough as it gets. And we don't know how healthy Luck's going to be yet, obviously. But, uh, I mean, they signed the Titans backup, Brian Schwenke. Uh, they drafted uh, Zach Banner uh, from Southern Cal in the fourth round. But essentially, they're coming back with the same offensive line as last year and an offensive line that uh, hasn't been uh, particularly effective. But I like what they did in free agency. I really do. I mean, yeah. Uh, you would hope that they would have done more in terms of protecting Andrew Luck, but this was a defense that was a disaster. Uh, and they went and they targeted a bunch of uh, uh, outside linebackers, you know, John Simon and Jabal uh, Sheard, Barcavius Mingo. They signed Jonathan Hankins to plug uh, up the middle. They drafted, as you mentioned, Malik Hooker and Quincy Wilson to help in the secondary. Uh, you know, Terrell Basham, another uh, draft choice with the potential to uh, have an impact right around, but this wasn't a team that was one or two star players away from suddenly being a Super Bowl squad. There were holes all over the place. And the one thing that the new GM Ballard has done, he's to, uh, let's take quantity over quality. He signed a bunch of guys, said the coaching staff, figure it out. You've got some new players. You've got some new pieces. Put these pieces together. Uh, whether it works or not, I don't know. But the fact that they didn't spend – the huge dollars to bring in some big name, in my mind, a much better approach. And, of course, when your top two picks are both in the secondary and your third pick is a defensive end, you have to expect a talent infusion on defense to have something of an impact from a defense that was a disaster area last year. Yep, the AFC South plays the NFC West and the AFC North. Two extra games at the Bills and the Broncos at home. What else do you have on the schedule? Well, uh, last year, the strength of schedule was slightly weaker than average and this year the schedule is a notch or two weaker than last year so the schedule very very manageable for the Colts this season it's worth noting last year for the entirety of the season they had one two game winning streak they had one two game losing streak and they alternated wins and losses for the entire rest of the season one thing that the Colts couldn't do was put together any sort of a winning streak find the same intensity two or three weeks in a row. That's something I'm going to watch very closely in September with Indianapolis, if they can find a way to turn that around. Early lean, what do you think? You know, I, I wouldn't be betting the Colts under. They have the best quarterback in the division. I like this division. People talk about the AFC South as being weak. I like Houston. I like Indy. I like Tennessee. And I like Jacksonville. Uh, I like all four of those teams. I think this is a tough division. I think this is going to be one of the tougher divisions in football. And there's not a one of these teams that I'm looking to bet under their season win total. All right, enter. You're probably the best guy in the country in NFL win totals going back 15 years. I want to get your thoughts uh, when we come back on Jacksonville as we finish out the division because everyone seems to like them over too. All right, money time, play of the day. Back to the Rangers and the, Rangers and the Angels. Where are we going? Yeah, game number 919-920. We talked about the success that Nolasco had last time out. We talked about that Hamels has found his groove a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of the same from two veteran pitchers in a pretty good spot against a couple of lineups that are not in great form right now. So let's take a look at it. 919-920, the L.A. Angels and the Texas Rangers under 10. You can get that at even money. And if you shop around, you can even find some 10 and a halfs out there. The prevailing number and the BOL number right now, 10. That's what we're going to grade ourselves by. Angels and Rangers under 10. That's our play of the day. All right. Very good. Good to be back. You have a good time in Boston. Uh, enjoy the All-Star break, and then we'll be back. Uh, after that week week break, and then we're back. We go hardcore the rest of the year, including Christmas, and we can't wait for football Hall of Fame game August 3rd. Thank you, thank you, Teddy. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, have a great week. Enjoy the games, and good luck. <laughs>